Hey guys! So, in my last few videos, I've been showing you how to press MAC pigment, how to press other brands of mineral or loose eyeshadows, and I've showed you how to make your own eyeshadow pans, and I've given you an inexpensive pre made eyeshadow pan that you can buy at a craft store. So, what's left? eyeshadow palettes. Let's say you've been on an eyeshadow pressing frenzy and now you've got a whole bunch of eyeshadows and you've got nothing to put them in. So what are your options? You could buy some pre-made palettes. Like I mentioned in a recent video, the e.l.f. eyeshadow palettes are only a dollar and you can press your eyeshadows right in there with those homemade eyeshadow pans that I showed you how to make. These are nice, but they're kind of heavy because of the mirror that's on them. And like I said before, they used to sell them at Target and Kmart, but now they're not carrying them anymore. So if you wanted to get some of these or get more of them, you would have to place an order online with e.l.f. And a lot of people don't like placing online orders. They just want something convenient that they can either buy right away or not. Another option is the MAC palettes. They're only $8 and they're really nice palettes and you can fit a lot of eyeshadows in them. In this palette I have some of the bottle cap style version eyeshadow pans that I told you that you can get at Michaels. Those are nice and sturdy and now that I've tried using both kinds, I think I do prefer these a little bit because the ones in the aluminum foil that you can make yourself aren't they're not as sturdy and you can't move them around once you press it in there you kinda have to leave it there or it's going to fall apart so if you're just gonna press it into that and leave it it'll be fine but if you wanna have the option of moving it around or changing the way they're arranged in the palette or moving it to another palette then you may wanna go with the bottle cap option but Mac Pro palettes are only sold at Mac stores and online. So again, you can't run down to your local Mac counter and pick up a Pro palette because they don't sell them there. So let's say you just want something easy that you can make just by buying, you know, inexpensive things at a store and make one yourself. Here's what I came up with. Remember that magnetic sheeting that I showed you in a previous video? And by the way, they've redesigned the package so it doesn't look like this anymore, but they do still sell it at Walmart and it's very inexpensive. You get two sheets in the package and you can cut this up into small pieces and you can stick it on the back of eyeshadows so that you can put the eyeshadows in the palette if you're going to do this option. Or even if you... Um, wanted to risk it and do the aluminum foil method. Um, if you're going to do the aluminum foil method, by the way, you don't need to put a magnet on the back of it to put it in an e.l.f. palette because it's once you close the cover, it's not going to move. But to make these bottle caps stick, you are going to need a piece of the magnetic sheeting. But anyways, I've covered all that in a previous video. But you're, you can also use these to make your own eyeshadow palettes. You only get two sheets of this in a package, but like I said, it's really inexpensive. You can get it at the craft section at Walmart. And so since there's only two sheets of this, you can only make two eyeshadow palettes with it because this is a little bigger than the, um, the box that we're going to be putting it in. Now, I bought a couple of these. These are photo cases from Michael's. But you can get very similar things at Walmart or lots of other stores. They're really inexpensive. These I bought uh, several months ago, actually, in the clearance section at Michael's, so I don't think they have these anymore. But you know what? There are more affordable options out there. You can get a very similar plastic case at Walmart. Um, theirs is called a pencil case, and it's just, you know, a plastic box that you can open and close and this one is one that I made. All I did was I took a sheet of that magnetic sheeting and I just cut it 
to fit this box. And then I peeled the backing off and stuck it in the box. And really what you have now is an eyeshadow palette because all I had to buy was the box and the magnetic sheeting. So very, very inexpensive. So simple to make. Anyone can do it. Just be careful when you're cutting this sheeting. You know, you want to try to get it as close to the size of the box as possible. I would suggest maybe cutting it just a hair bigger than what you think you're going to need and then sort of see how it fits. And if it's too big, then just trim the edges a little bit more because you don't want to go too small because once you go too small, that's it. You won't be able to fix it. And again, you want it to be perfect because once you peel the backing off this and press it down, you won't be able to lift it back up again. So once you have this set up like this, then you can just take your eyeshadows and put them in the palette. So here's one of the ones that I made with the bottle cap. And as you can see, it this has got the, the little piece of the magnetized sheet on the back. So those two things together will be strong enough to hold it in the palette. But again, I wouldn't use the aluminum foil version on something like this that's going to flop around. You need that to be in a confined space for that to work. And another thing I wanted to bring up today while I have your attention about pressing was grades of alcohol. I had been using just ordinary rubbing alcohol which is 70% grade and I was able to find the higher grade of alcohol which is 91%. I found it at Rite Aid on sale got this for two dollars and change so I'm not really sure when that sale ends but if you are interested in pressing some eyeshadows you may want to take advantage of that if it's still going on I think don't most sales run from like Sunday to Saturday so I bought this yesterday so I think that sale would still be going on but yeah two dollars and change 91 percent alcohol and the reason why you want this is because it's going to dry a lot faster than the 70% one. So if you're using those bottle caps, I don't know what those are made out of. If they're made out of tin, you don't want the alcohol to sit in there any longer than it has to. So the faster it dries, the better off you're going to be. And plus, you know, the faster it dries, the quicker you'll be able to use your new eyeshadows. And I also did want to mention that I tried pressing my first non-MAC eyeshadow. And this is what I have on my lids today. It's a Barry M Dazzle Dust in Lavender. And then um, I have a L'Oreal Infallible in Perpetual Purple in the crease. But I made out okay. Um, and you might remember that when I was talking about pressing non-MAC eyeshadows, you need to add a binder. When I just started off with a couple of drops of, um, I ended up using the fractionated coconut oil and it didn't come out to the consistency I wanted so I added just a little bit more and it didn't improve upon the texture. But even though it does come out kind of lumpy when you're done, it still works just like any other eyeshadow. So really it just doesn't, it isn't going to look as smooth as the MAC pigments do because those are made out of you know, totally different ingredients than, say, a barium dazzle dust would be. This is my MAC pigment in melon that I pressed. I actually had to repress it because, and here's another tip, you want to make sure that when you press it, you press down as hard as you can and hold for a few seconds. Don't just press it with the quarter and think you're all done. You need to press it really hard and squeeze out every air bubble and every drop of alcohol that's in there. Um, otherwise, it's going to crumble and fall apart. So just make sure that you give it a really hard press for, I don't know, it, it, you know, there's no set time limit on that. But just press it down as hard as you can and um, that way it will come out nice and smooth and it won't crumble and fall apart over time. So I think that's it, you guys. Um, this has been quite an experience, I'll tell you. I've been having so much fun with this that I think I'm actually going to press most of my loose 
eyeshadows, pigments, whatever I have, because they don't end up getting used the way they are. Now you can mix loose eyeshadows and pigments with um, a little bit of water and foil them, or you can use a few drops of Max Fix Plus, and you can apply them wet, but I don't really like that super dramatic look that you get when you foil them. So I actually prefer the look of just a regular pressed eyeshadow because see how it's kind of shimmery and everything anyway? Well, when you foil it, to me, it's a little bit over the top. So I prefer the way the eyeshadows look when they're dry. So I think I am going to turn this into like a hobby and just start pressing all my loose eyeshadows, all my pigments into regular eyeshadows. So that's why I wanted to give you this option in case you wanted to do it too because it is really a lot of fun. Like when I started getting into depotting eyeshadows and putting them into palettes, that is not fun. That's work and I really didn't enjoy it but now that it's all done and my eyeshadows are all in palettes it's nice to have them in palettes because then you can group them and organize them however you want. You can put them by color, you can put them by your favorites, you can do whatever you want. When you have eyeshadows that are all in little singular pots and you open a drawer, it just, I don't know. I guess I'm, you know, a fairly organized person, so I like to see them in palettes. That's just a preference, I guess. Plus, it takes up way less room in the drawer if you put them in palettes. So, now that I've done that, all that's left when I open those drawers are all these loose shadows, loose pigments that I never use because they are loose. So I'm going to press them. It's going to be a hobby and I'm just going to take my time and have fun with it. I'm going to try the different binders that I told you about. I'm going to try using the glycerin. I'm going to maybe get some dimethicone and try that and see how it works. And once I've been doing this for a while, I'll come back and let you know what ended up being the best binder to use and which eyeshadows pressed the best, which ones did I have trouble with. There is one that I'm scared to death to press because you can't buy it anymore. So I don't think I'm going to press my Accessorize Eye Dust in Molten Truffle because I friggin' love this thing. It is so beautiful. And they don't sell this anymore. Matter of fact, I don't know what's going on with the Accessorize brand. Maybe any of you who live in the UK can tell me what has happened to their eyeshadows. I went on the Superdrug website and there was hardly anything. I think there was one or two eyeshadows on there. Um, but this, it looks super dark, but it's really not. It's like a purpley taupe brown and this is so beautiful when it's on the eyes. By the way, one more thing before I let you go. Depending on what you use for a binder with your non-MAC um, eyeshadow, loose eyeshadows and pigments, depending on what you use for a binder, it can actually alter the color of what you're pressing. So don't be surprised if it's slightly different than what you started with. If you have anything that you are crazy about the color, you may not want to press it because it may not end up being that color after you press it. So just a heads up on that. All right, I'm going to let you guys go and this will probably be the last video that I do about pressing eyeshadows for quite a while because, you know, we don't want to we don't want to overdo it. I mean, there's only so much you can say about this subject. So, I'll be moving on to other things coming up next and I'll see you next time. Bye.